First thing is first, we're gonna grab some Rapid Set from the hardware store. We're at Home Depot right now. Lucas is grabbing some Rapid Set. Found him. Hey, <laughs> what up? So we picked up all the supplies that we need. Lucas has everything in his truck that we need as well. Now we're gonna make it to the install location and try to uh, do it discreetly. This is where we are installing the monorail concrete spot. It's super cool. It's actually been installed here before. Lucas built it about a year, maybe two years ago. And then every winter they clean this ditch out. So during the winter, if there's anything here, it will get destroyed. But now that we're about to go back almost into summertime, it's time to rebuild this thing. And it's such a fun spot. So I'm excited to get it. It's kind of like a slappy grind spot. We got all the material down here. It's a sort of a trek to get down here, almost like a mile walk from where we parked the car to get all the supplies in. And that's a common theme when you're trying to build DIY spots, you have to find normally somewhere that's a little bit off the beaten path. And that's where this is actually on the side of the freeway. So you could just pull over the freeway maybe and dump all your supplies, but that also jeopardizes you getting caught before you even get a chance to build the spot. So now that we got all the material down here after trekking it all through with the shopping cart and the dolly, it was no easy task, but that's just part of building skate spots. Super hyped to install this monorail. This is like the trek from like uh, LA to Vegas. Like days and confused is happening like around here. <laughs> So Lucas poured these at home. They're about eight feet long. Altogether, it's gonna be 24 feet long of a concrete rail, which is super rad. And essentially poured all of this at home. I made a similar coping video tutorial. I'll leave a link up above. And these ones are a lot better, a lot bigger than the ones I made. But now what we're basically gonna do is connect all of them and build the ledge on top of the bank using bricks and mortar. at the top and then put a two footer, a six footer, and then a two footer. Okay. So then there's just more, there's less seams at the in top. The beginning. The, in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Exactly. So that's where you're getting on. Like this, here's the top, and each one will be like that. Oh, there you go. So you know your gaps are the same. It's consistent. Yep. It's the next step, we basically, Got it all lined up. We got the spaced out bricks. Now we start mixing. Okay. Yeah, and then throw mix, it on there. Then slap the, the mud, that stuff. Just lay this on there. Yeah. And just start filling it all. And Boom. then we're gonna basically fill these gaps, mortar, mortar, so it ties to it. Yeah. And then just tranny. Boom, 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 boom. Sweet. Yep. It's so fun. Tail drop too. Oh my gosh, right? 
one of the reasons that we're not like using liquid nails or anything is because these things weigh so much. They're so heavy. So you don't have to worry too much about them actually piecing to the ground. It's more so we're just building them up so they're not sitting straight on the ground because and then you wouldn't be able to pinch it to it or grind it that well. The idea with the bricks is that we're adding some height underneath these Tootsie Rolls, these blocks of coping, I don't know what to call them. And the idea being that you can actually hold your Smith grinds, your tail slides, things like that a lot better than if they were on the ground. So let's get to mixing our mortar, the Type S Specs mix, and then slapping it down, adding some transition basically onto the coping. All the doping. You always want to add water into your bucket before the concrete, because otherwise your concrete will stick to the bottom of your bucket. So make sure you add water first. We're going to fill it and trowel it the whole way. We're not going to fill it and then trowel it. We're just going to fucking do it all at once. Yeah, yeah all the way down. All, all the way down. It makes sense as you lay it down, because it's Type S. That's the one thing for sure. The stuff is so fine. Like it's not, it doesn't have any rocks or anything okay. in that like that. So basically you could build a transition as soon as you're throwing it down because it's got that nice fine texture. basically mixing more mortar and just adding it to the side basically banking it out on the side of the curb aka the tootsie roll as we go down the bank so now just mix and repeat Basically, we got all the mortar on there. We banked it all the way out from top to bottom. As you see it, the monorail is installed. Typically, you wanna wait at least 24 hours before you skate mortar. It's been 24 hours since we set the mortar and all the coping down. We're gonna fix one of the cracks in between the coping because it's a pretty good size crack that will definitely mess up your grind. So we're gonna add some Bondo. And basically all we're gonna do is tape off the edges where we want the Bondo to start and to end. Add some harder to the Bondo and then add it in there. Lucas is getting it all prepped up and then we're gonna get a skate session once that Bondo's dry. Add a little lacquer, clear coat, set of wax. Basically it's gonna get that concrete nice and grinding and sliding, a little clear thin layer on there. And then uh, it's skate time. <laughs> Bondo's almost dry. Michael's hitting it with that last coat of lacquer, getting nice and grindable from here. Um, pretty much sweeping everything up, the runway, shoveling everything out, some old crust just to get everything nice and clear so that we can get a seat session. Pretty clear tell sign that your lacquer is dry is if it's not sticky to the touch. It's not tacky, nothing like that. Just touch it, doesn't feel like anything. Nice clear coat, then it's skate time. First one's gonna be really scary too because it's downhill and it's lacquered up. It's just kind of intimidating. You don't know if it's gonna slide, not slide. Just kind of tinker with it, kind of mess around with it before you start actually going for it. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Lucas for letting me come out and document the process of him installing this DIY skate spot. Shout out to everyone out there that's building skate spots. Subscribe if you're not already. See you next one. Mash.